with more than 72,000 students. Arizona State is the largest public university in the United States. Dr. Michael Crow has been its president for the last decade, and he has created a model of higher education that has attracted the attention of other educators from far away as China. Welcome. Welcome. You use a term called arrogance ignorance. What do you mean? Yeah, the, the, the concept uh, of what's happened for us in American higher education is that we've We've built a system, an enterprise, if you will, which is fantastically recognized around the world for its successes, but not designed because of our success to actually educate the whole of the country. And so our arrogance of our success has created an ignorance in how to design a higher education enterprise that can reach the breadth of our talent in the United States. So what do we need to do to show that we're getting it and we're smarter? We need to innovate on every level. We need to change our clock speed in the universities, we need to change our pedagogical approaches, we need to find ways to find talent across the broad spectrum of our society, we need to find ways to uh, uh, drive learning at faster rates, uh, and all of that requires innovation. There's also this debate about whether a college education is appropriate for everyone there. Where do you wade in on that? A college education isn't appropriate for everyone, but lifelong education is required for everyone in our economy going forward. If we don't figure out how to do that, we're not going to be competitive at the level that we need to be competitive. And what role will online education play in that? Online will be a foundational base of many, at many levels. There'll be courses available from places like Coursera, which uh, released some stories uh, yesterday in the New York Times. There'll be online augmentation in the classroom. There'll be online augmentation for people in their homes and their lives. You just have to imagine that education now is not a step that you take. It's a part of your everyday consumption. Tell me about the role of president. I mean, you've had this job for a while. What have you learned and, and what mistakes have you made that were uh, a teachable moment? Well, there's lots of teachable moments and lots of things that you learn uh, along the way. I mean, I think the role of the president of the university uh, is one where you have to make decisions in the best interest of who you serve. In our case, we serve our students, we serve the people of Arizona, we serve the people of the United States. Uh, that's a slightly different decision than if you think that you're there to serve just the faculty. And so then there's a tension if the leader of the institution is, a try is attempting to deliver the program for who we serve, our students, mm. there's a tension between faculty and student objectives. And uh, there's a lot of lessons about how to do that in the right way, and I learned some of them the hard way along the way. What are the lessons coming out of Penn State? The Penn State lesson, from my perspective, is uh, they lost track of why they're there. They're not there to play football. Football is a means. It is not an end. And they lost track of the fact that uh, they're there with mm. children and young adults to protect them, to nurture them, to bring them forward. And everything that they do must be related to that. If you don't think that that's what you're doing, then you're making a big mistake. Should they suspend their football program? Uh, I would support a severe punishment, yes. Which would might be what? It could be uh, what's referred to in the NCAA as the death penalty, which means not playing uh, clearly. For a year or more. Whatever the, whatever the process, there's a process that they have to go through. Uh, and I, I believe that, that uh, uh, there has to be some sanction, yes. My friend Bill Friday from North Carolina, man you know and respect, uh, has been concerned about the impact of college sports. You have a large athletic program. Right. How do you find the balance? It's a tough balance to find when college sports, I was a college athlete, when college sports run away from their purpose. Their purpose is to provide young people with an unbelievable opportunity to compete at a very high level across a broad spectrum of sports, but also to sort of give this vision of young people competing. Well, we've gotten a little bit away from that. And so the way that we're pulling that back is by intensifying our academic requirements across the entire spectrum of colleges and universities. Mark Emmert, the new president right. of the NCAA, right. is driving those. I support those uh, immensely. He's a, a college classmate of mine. And, but, but it's really about returning to the roots. College athletes competing at the highest possible level. Uh, what was your sport? I was a javelin thrower. You were? Yeah. <laughs> Did you have Olympic ambitions? Uh, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, finally, this. In terms of how long uh, this balance with the faculty and the power of the faculty and, and all of that that exists at a university, uh, it is also said that university presence should not stay too long. Well, you know, what's interesting about that, uh, you know, there's a, the, the turnover rate is probably faster than it should be. 
Uh, I serve at the pleasure of a board. I serve in five-year increments. I can be dismissed at any moment. And so it's not some, some long thing that is an expectation. It's if the enterprise is moving forward and you're successfully moving the enterprise forward, move it forward. And if not, get out of the way. Michael Crow, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to have you on the program.